Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. Now I forgot uh, that I realized I could get this on test server um, because I don't have it on live. So I wanted to bring you this video because I've been thinking about doing it for a while, especially with people talking about and hyping it up in the comments, etc. So what we're going to be talking about this video is the Omega Hedron artifact, uh, which is using a superpower in combat while between 25 and 75% power increases your base power regeneration by 7.5 at 80, 10% at 120, and 12.5% for 6 seconds at 160. Uh, this is the artifact you earn from the Superman uh, DLC episodes, basically by doing... Um, it's one of the missions in your inventory, but essentially it's just by doing each one of the, the Superman missions, so everyone should have this already. It's really simple to get. Um, but I wanted to um, test it a couple things. There's a lot, a lot of people have been hyping this up to me, and really, I didn't, in my mind, I didn't think it was going to make that much of a difference at all. So I wanted to actually show you guys so we, you can kind of, you know, settle that question. So I've ar arranged uh, two different tests. Um, now, I'm not testing this at 80 and 120 because, well, 80, 7.5%, you know, regardless is not going to be noticeable whatsoever. 10%, you could argue maybe, but... Uh, now with all the extra XP that we have, and if people already had this, uh, they should have it at 160 by now, or buying stuff from the marketplace or whatever. So it, it's a lot easier to get 160 artifacts. So I'm testing this at 160. So if, if we notice a huge increase, then you'd be like, okay. Then if it's a huge increase at 12.5, it's going to be noticeable still at 10. So that's my thinking. Uh, also, I don't want to risk deleting this on test server and then not be able to get it again from the vendor. So that, that's the other reason. Uh, so essentially, I have two tests. Um, one, I'm going to be testing a Blossom on Nature. Uh, basically, you know, priority heals you can just spam. They're a 250 power cost. Uh, so I'm going to do spam as many as I can without the Omega Hedron and with it. And then the, my second test, I have two power sets, one Mental and Quantum, because those are the two rotations that I've tested throughout all my time that I know 100% without the Omega Hedron, I can't get through like a proper 30-second parser. So we'll see if you can use the Omega. So that's what I have for you guys here today.
Okay, to uh, summon up in those tests, uh, my first test was Blossom. I got one more Blossom using the Megahedron. My uh, mental test, I still didn't have enough power regen to hit Ambush Pain on the second rotation, uh, which was you know pretty much the exact same with and without. My Quantum rotation, I picked up about seven seconds, uh, but still not like a huge difference. And I picked those powers because mental is very spike power. Uh, the... Psychic Prism, Invisibility, Ambush Pain Clip is probably the most the highest power cost clip in the entire game. That's a 900 power cost move in the fraction of a second, uh, which is you know enormous power, uh, spike power. Uh, Quantum is is high power cost, slow power. Uh, it's you're still going to use a lot of powers Quantum, but it's not very spike power because all the animations are long, the cooldowns are longer. So while you're still using a lot of power, it's not as in immediate bursts as it is with a uh, mental and then blossom priority heal spam, you know, is the, you know, epitome of, you know, spike power spam. So what these tests kind of show us is a, a megahedron doesn't deserve some of the hype that some players are, are showing us uh, are, are telling us because I, I don't want to say it's, it's worthless. Cause I, I would, I would not agree that that's an accurate assessment of a megahedron to say it's worthless, even though my test, these tests are, are very static. Like it, it's not going to be um, what you're going to see in rating. If you're testing on the art on their, your sparring targets, yes, these these uh, the tests that I set up for megahedron are going to be very accurate. But in terms of a rating scenario, you're not always going to be seeing that. And and what I mean by that is, if you have a like a really bad troll in your group and your megahedron, then you're then you're fine. A bad troller will fill in the gaps and the Megahedron is not regening you. So you'll feel that you have a better time. But if you're running with a with a competent controller, like I do in my runs or when I'm controlling, you don't want to need Omega because that competent controller that knows what he's doing has the proper artifacts. The power return you have is completely fine. Like electricity is a, like, uh, is a high power cost. Like I'm near the top of the charts in power cost for electricity where I don't feel that I'm using electricity power at all. Like I, I, I never have to use my soda for power. It's just that it's all. It's just like quantum. It's it's slower power but high power cost. So I never feel like I'm at an issue for power, uh, even though I'm using the most in the raid. Where say if I was like a, if I was mental DPSing or even like light DPSing, I can feel even with a good troll, I can feel that okay. I'm running out of power real quick. I'm gonna have to use sodas or spy drops. Like I, I can feel that I'm not getting enough power to to do this rotation. So even if I had Omega, as you can see in these tests, really is it gonna help? Yeah, a really good troll and a megahedron. Yeah, it's gonna help you. But at the same time, is it worth it for me to lose all those stats? Because when you when you think of a megahedron, a you're not gonna have tanks running it. As a controller, you should not be running it either because the parasite power harness, the soul cloak. And the Amulet of Rao are three better options than the Megahedron. The Megahedron is like the fourth option for controller. Uh, you could argue gadgets and mental. Technically, if your gadgets are mental, you can use a Megahedron if you want because of the 60 second cooldown. But I still prefer having the, you know, the 47 second cooldown, 51 second, whatever it is with the Scrap of Soul Cloak. So you could argue that, but still, you know, a much better argument can be made that this is the fourth best artifact for controlling. For precision DPS, you're not going to be using a Megahedron. There's way better options. Tanks, you're not going to. Might DPS, uh, it's up in the air. Uh, the Solar Amplifier gives you so much more might that I prefer having the stats rather than just a little bit of regen that obviously you can see doesn't make that much of a difference. Would it help? Yes. Is it going to make a night and day difference? No. So for Might DPS for now, the Tetrahegon, the Scrap of Soul Cloak, and the Solar Amplifier are going to be the better three. Uh, if you've already leveled up an Omegahedron, obviously don't start leveling a Solar Amplifier from scratch. Just keep this one. But the, the Might, I think, would serve as better for that. For healers, this is where I think healers, it's it's still good. Um, healers running the Demon Fang and the Omegahedron together uh, is going to be a really great power combination uh, for power regen. The Starheart isn't really the best. Um healers don't really have any good super uh, artifacts right now that could change in the future 
But right now, if you're a healer, if you run the Demon Fang, scrap the Soul Cloak, and then make a Hedron, that would be probably your best three combination for that as a healer. Um, but overall, as you guys can see, the Mega Hedron makes a little bit of a difference, but not enough to warrant everyone needing it. If you guys you know, want to put, put any comments or questions in the comments, go ahead. But as you can see, I know these tests aren't perfect, but they give you a good indication of what 12.5% actually means and what it means in practicality. I, I like the practical test than, than math. Take care, guys.